Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play, or should we say another replay? Uh, this is Desert Strike, and we originally played this about eight years ago, I think, when I first decided to get into Let's Playing back when I was in my early 20s. Oh my god. And I'm in my early 30s. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> nearly, yeah, early 30s. Technically accurate. 33 early. Yes. Ha. So, Desert Strike Return to the Gulf, a game that I played thousands of times as a kid. In fact, I think was the only actual game uh, in my Mega Drive <laughs> for, for, for months and months at a time uh, until Jungle Strike came out. Um, definitely remember getting that for my birthday. And... Uh, I also remember getting Urban Strike as well, my favourite Mega Drive games of all time. So many people um, pick, you know, like Streets of Rage or Sonic or equally good games, I'm sure, uh, as their favourites um, for the 16-bit Mega Drive. And my favourite series, the Strike series. Uh, how we never got remasters of these or re-releases of these, I don't know. I believe they did come out on PSP or something like that on a, on a uh, EA collector's disc at one point, but who knows? These games were so big back in the day. They were massive. Um, every fucker knew Desert Strike. So why we never got re-releases, I don't know. It still bugs me to this day. There were rumours many years ago when the 360 was still new that EA were looking to re-release a lot of their old older catalogue on um, uh, the then new Xbox Live Arcade, but these games sadly never, for some reason, arrived. Anyway, um, so what's different? What's going to be different this time? Um, apart from the fact that I have a new microphone, well, I don't have a new microphone, I have a new microphone that I didn't have then. Um, I have a new control pad as well. I'm, well, again, not really very new, but... Um, I have the 8-bit Do M30, which is a amazing Mega Drive control pad. Uh, I'm looking very much forward to playing this. Anyway, let's just jump in, shall we? Um, not really sure who I'm going to take as my co-pilot. I think I might take Ozzy. She's a good, solid partner for um, starting off. <laughs> this guy kind of sucks. Calls it courage. Call it courage or insanity, but Mr. D has no fear. In the heat of battle, he's often so pumped that he loses control of his body, shooting wildly and jamming the winch. Uh, yeah, he's he's not very good. Uh, Tracker is a congressman's son, raised on a sprawling ranch where he learnt to shoot at a very young age. But his fellow officers sometimes wonder if he really cares about the grunts. Yeah, not very good on the winch. <clears throat> Then we have X-Man. X-Man is great on missions with little hostile fire. Nobody is better with a winch, but his marksmanship leaves something to be desired. So we're going to go with Ozzy, and we're going to hit it up. Listen up, pilots. You're about to begin a campaign to save the world from a psycho madman. Unless you stop this madman, he will start World War Three, or even worse. Holy smokes. <clears throat> we have a lost intelligence agent in this sector. This agent has the madman's nuclear plans. It's up to you to find the lost agent. But first, you must complete important missions. Destroy the radar sites. Blow up the power plant. Bomb the airfields. Hit the enemy command centers. If you want to survive, I suggest you complete these missions in order. The world is watching and counting on you. Good luck. All right, let's ride. See that frigate? Let's take our Apache out. Look at... And you know what? This game... These old pixel art games really do hold up very, very nicely. Um, this control pad works wonderfully as well. It's so nice. Uh, it's so faithful to the original um, <clears throat> control pads. Now we have our cannons. Let's go save this soldier as well. Get the fuck off our friend though. We're going to try and rescue all of, our, all of our dudes here. Now, there is a way... Yeah, there you go. You can get turbo fire. Oh, we take these AA guns out. Yeah, there is a way you can get turbo fire on this control pad as well, which is cool. I mean, is turbo fire cheating? I don't think it is. Why is it not cheating? Because when I had a Mega Drive, I had the Competition Pro control pad, 
And that sucker had uh, turbo fire built in. Everybody had turbo fire built in. That was like, man, that's so weird to think of, you know, turbo fire control pads. Uh, hey, buddy, get out of here. Um, to think that, it, I mean, it's kind of cheating, I suppose. But at the same time, it cut down on a lot of, uh, a lot of bullshit. Uh, like, you know, finger blisters and stuff like that, especially in shmups. Now, there were games that turbo fire. Uh, it was actually a hindrance, just because it actually, like, cycled too fast. Right, let's go save this dude. This dude uh, is a hidden co-pilot. And uh, is much better than the co-pilot we actually have. In fact, the co-pilot we actually have now is really cool. Oh, God, it feels good to be back here. And look at the, the way the helicopter just spins and floats around with momentum. It's so fun to fly. Always was. Right, who are you shooting at? Come on, my friend. Now, picking up these dudes does actually allow us to uh, take... I don't know if I've, Do I need to explain Desert Strike? Probably. So, essentially, we're thrown into a combat situation. And we have uh, uh, four maps with different objectives. And we have to complete the objectives in order, otherwise we get those alert zones. Alert zones are bad news. Um, much harder enemies. <laughs> enemies have much further range, take more damage, and deal out much more damage. We only have uh, three lives. If we lose all of our lives, then it is game over and we have to start again. There is a variety of enemies dotted around the map. There's also a variety of friendlies dotted around the map. If we save the friendlies, we can take them back to landing zones to get patched up for free armor. Like so. Each We have 600 points of armor. And uh, each dude we survive, survive, each dude we save, I should say, will <clears throat> uh, allow us to repair 100 points of armor back at the base. So that's always good. The first level is like really easy. Uh, I think this game does get a little bit challenging later on. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not like Jungle Strike, the sequel, which is absolutely savage. And look at this. I love this up here. Got a right little shootout going on. You can actually watch these shootouts play out. And, you know, different stuff actually happens each time. Like, I mean, I think your guys will always lose that just because it's overwhelming, like, amounts of firepower being aimed at them and this guy was just jumping up and down surrendering whilst that guy was shooting him but sometimes there are actually shootouts that you can find and it's pretty evenly matched you know ah this game still looks so good you know they just like um they look like big dioramas big toy dioramas and we're running out of fuel because our helicopter does run out of fuel we only have 100 units of fuel and that does tick down over time fuel is a pain in this game. Nice try, buddy. It really is, because it ticks down very, very, very fast. Alright, there should be some fuel drums in here. But, there's that dude there. Who is only there to fuck you over when looking for fuel. Now, if we hold down the C button, we actually can jink, which is nice. Now, I think in the later games, because this is a six-button control pad, in the later games, they did actually allow for the six-button controls. But I don't think I ever used them, even though I had the six-button competition pro. So let's continue clearing out these. Oom. Now, as we start destroying these, we will actually uh, attract the ire of one of these bad boys. And they're probably the biggest threat on this level. Now, if we go into our, our uh, multifunction display here, we can actually get some information up about our objectives and whatnot. So, these are our main objectives. We had the radar sites. Told you how much armor they have. Destroy the early warning radar sites. When a radar is active, the enemy weapons have an increased range. They do. Uh, yeah, they have increased range. And they do more damage. And they can take more damage. It's bad news. So, we've only just picked up... Um, those fuel barrels <clears throat> which gives you a hundred fuel and we're already down to 82 it's madness and then we have a status screen which I really like return to frigate when missions are complete you can balls up which is incredibly frustrating <clears throat> um, but there we go but also if we scroll through this we can see some information on enemies not all enemies will be listed here 
So that is the VDA, 20 millimeter cannon. So it's got uh, 100 armor uh, and does 25 damage per shot on us. Now we have three weapons. We have guns, which do three points of damage per shot. We have hydro rockets, which do 25 damage per shot. And we have hellfires, which do 100 damage per shot. So these guys, we can smoke them with one hellfire or four rockets. This desert rodent likes to sneak up on intruders. Watch out for its rapid fire double barreled cannons. Yeah, nasty bit of work. Um, these are also quite painful. Only 75 armor, so we can waste it with one hellfire or three uh, rockets. Surface to air missiles. Deadly accurate, but with quick maneuvering, your Apache can outgun a rapier. Yes, it can. And then these are the little guys. Uh, AA 30mm armor. So it's actually, it's a 30mm cannon, which is much bigger than the VDA cannon, which is 20mm. But they actually do less damage, which is interesting. This anti-aircraft gun... This anti... Uh, oh, anti-aircraft gun. This weapon's poor accuracy is compensated by its rapid firing rate. So this does 20 damage and has 50 armor. Two hellfires will smoke that guy. And then, of course, we have US troops missing in action. We will rescue all of those guys. And we can look for ammo and fuel and that kind of stuff. And it will appear on the map. Now, in the later missions, these will not all be highlighted and there will be hidden enemies and whatnot so it definitely does get a little bit trickier as we go now we're basically rinsed through all of our weapons so let's go grab some ammo shall we uh apparently there's some ammo over here so we we'll go scoop that up oh hello these guys really aren't much of a threat not a threat at all to be fair so it looks like there's some ammo hidden in this one now uh on the later levels um and I did say this in my original LP as well. Uh, I did scratch um, a few item pickup locations into my glass CRTV uh, with a pair of scissors. I do believe it was. Oh my god, I remember that. Uh, just to make some of the levels easier because not all uh, pickups on every level are highlighted. And there's a very nasty mission in the second game. Now, if we... Ooh, that's... Uh, enemy that we can actually capture but he's disappeared now so we can't capture him but sometimes if you destroy buildings and whatnot you will have oh god I just wasted a friendly there because I was trying to shoot that that's that sucks I hate doing that but you know all fair in war and all that stuff oh nice try my turn mine's bigger uh, on every level there is a quick winch that does allow you to uh, winch things up much, much faster, as you'd imagine, being called a quick winch. But it is really useful. It's a really useful item. So much quicker. All right, let's go to town on the last airbase. Boom! See you in hell. God, this game... I, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. This game still looks incredibly good for a 16-bit game. And it plays well, uh, you know. Lots of... Um, there, there is, well, I say lots. There, there is slowdown in this game, like there was in a lot of 16-bit uh, games. But considering what they are trying to do, it's held up remarkably well. Let's just peel open this bad boy. Boom. There we go. Oof. You thought I forgot about you, didn't you? I did not forget about you. And that VDA that's just creeping in. Let's go up behind him. Smoke him with a hellfire. Fuck you, pal. All right, let's open up the control tower. Pretty sure there's always a guy in the control tower. Yeah. Good night. Yeah, those guys with the shoulder-mounted uh, launchers can really sting if you let them. All right, cool. Ammo. Uh, we don't need the ammo, but we can grab it. There is fuel as well. We will pick up the fuel because we've burnt through it already see how much quicker the quick winch is doesn't seem much quicker actually but it is uh so that's that mission complete now if we go down here uh there is a rapier we don't really want to play with a rapier now in one of the ah see what i mean there we go hello friend ah we're out of space that's fine we'll leave him uh run around there is a armor repair there ouch and we do need to actually go to an LZ to drop off some of these guys. There's also uh, 
like a village there that was being attacked by the madman's troops. You can save the guy there, um, but yeah, you don't really need to worry too much about that. Now let's look for a landing zone. I think there's only one on this level. There is, and it's halfway up. So let's go drop these dudes off. We get some repairs whilst we're at it. You can only hold six men. I don't know how they fit, you know. Uh, these extra people in these helicopters in this Apache, but then this is a modified Apache. This is the Strike Apache. Uh, this first game is a bit light on the law, as you would imagine, but as the games go on, especially into the PlayStation era, you do get the whole Strike net and everything. Which is really bloody cool. And maybe we'll revisit the PlayStation games as well. Maybe we will revisit those. They haven't aged as well as these, I don't think. Just because of the... The PlayStation came out in a very awkward time where 3D was becoming the big thing. Sadly, early 3D games just do not hold up as well as these. Now, I remember um, my friend and I uh, back in the day talking about this when I think we was, we was on the PlayStation or might have been the, the Dreamcast and PlayStation 2 back then. And we, was, we were actually saying, now if we open this one up, we get an extra life. We were actually saying um, back then that, uh, don't you think that Mega Drive games actually still look better than PlayStation games? I was thinking about it for a minute. Like, what? When he said it to me. And like, then we actually sat down and started uh, talking about it. And it's like, actually, they do. They, they do look more detailed. They look more interesting than a lot of early PlayStation. These guys actually hurt. PlayStation and N64 games that just really haven't aged very well at all. They're still, most of them, still fun to play. Uh, and I love the PlayStation one. It, you know, it has some very good looking games, but on the whole, yeah, I mean, one game that really sticks out for me on the PlayStation, even now, is Spyro. Just how good Spyro looks. Right, anyway, we've got to go capture this dude. Mission 4 complete. I don't know why. I think that's an emulator thing. There's a little cutscene there. Um, basically getting the location of the guy. But for some reason, it always instantly skips it. I don't know why. It's annoying. Let's take the last command guy out as well. Because why not? We don't want any enemy command left over, do we? I might be able to do one mission, one video. Well, I probably will do one mission, one video, because you kind of have to do them in one shot as well. We're not going to be using save states for the simple reason that we don't need to. You know, I think I used save states when I originally did this. I honestly can't remember. I'm going to say I probably did. Now, these heavy machine gun guys do way more damage than you would think. They do crazy amounts of damage. I mean, look, we're already down to 145 armor, which is bad. All right, let's take that guy out. Let's clear the way for this guy as well. They really hurt. That didn't actually hit us. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that didn't hit us either, luckily enough. Is there another one? Yeah, there is one more. Oof. The old strike dodge. Let's Fill his ass up with rockets. He's had enough. Cool. All right, last one. Oh, and of course, low fuel. Yes, well, luckily, they were expecting us. So let's go grab that. Boom. All right, come here, buddy. You ain't getting away. Okay, so we're basically out of supplies again. Uh, there's another VDA up there that we know about. Let's go. Go get patched up. We're really badly wounded. We don't need to get patched up, actually. We can go scoop up this armor down here. Yink. There we go. Smoke them if you got them, I guess. Um, we need one space left over. So let's go see these MIAs up here. We are really out of uh, ammo as well. Now, I know the VDA is up here. So we can go smoke that, which is where we left the uh, power lines. For the power station, this little sucker creeps down. I always used to worry about this guy. I always used to think eventually he's going to get down uh, to our troops down here and cause trouble for them. Of course, he never does, but I always, you know, 
Like, oh my god, better go save those soldiers before the VDA gets there. Um, we have a load of five. We need ammo. Let's pick up some ammo. I'd say plenty of ammo and, and fuel on this level. I mean, the majority of the levels, you've got plenty of ammo and fuel. You don't really have to worry too much about it. But there are some levels that cut it very close. Let's just say that. Ooh. Uh, let's just scoop you up because we're here, I suppose. Now we can't actually uh, do the final mission without loading up there yet. Yeah. Ah, oh. oh god, we're out. <laughs> Bingo weapons. Right, let's open these up. And sometimes you can get men out of these and whatnot like that. Which one actually has the ammo? Is it this one? We're just literally wasting and burning through all of our fuel here, but that's fine. Let's go unload our dudes. Hey friend, you really going to take on an Apache with your, like, I don't know, he doesn't even look like you got an AK. He's like firing away at us with some fucking... Uh, like rifle of some description. Pansy. Right, let's drop these dudes off. Drop the kids off at the pool. Well, that means something else, but let's not go there. Well, alrighty then. Now, we could technically play this on a real Mega Drive uh, with real hardware, blah, 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 blah. But to be honest, connecting all that up to my capture card and then having to put up with the blurry, horrible picture because of all the processing. And also, PAL games run a lot slower at 50 hertz. Nah, with, with old 16-bit games. Emulation, um, unfortunately, it's just the way to go. As these consoles age as well, it's, it's just going to be the way. Um, now, we need to blow up these buildings. It's actually random which building. This hatch is going to be in, so bear that in mind. We're also low on fuel. So, we had to do the airfields and the power station. So, power station, 100 megawatt. Armor, 400. So, four hellfires, basically. Um, we'll take this thing out. Or 16 uh, rockets, which is a hell of a lot. Destroy the power station to cut off enemy command... The enemy command center and airfields. The enemy will be forced to aim his weapons manually. Uh-huh. I mean, that's usually fluff. It doesn't really mean much. Uh, it just means that the alert zones will disappear. Military airfield. Destroy all planes and buildings at the airfields to maintain air superiority for later missions. Yeah. You never really have to fight any other aircraft apart from helicopters in this. I think there's a couple of helicopters. They're nasty. Nasty, vicious little things. Uh, command center. 250 armor. So we can punch that open with two hellfires and two rockets. But we got chain gun for that, so. Destroy the enemy command and control centers. You must capture the commander to find out where the secret agent is being hidden. Yeah, well, we took both of them. Secret intelligence agent. Find and rescue the secret agent. He has the madman's secret plans and maps, he does. And I actually thought he was a she back in the day. But there we go. Right. And these were cool. These were so cool back in the day. Actual full motion video. Well, <laughs> air quotes. Yeah, they're so ominous with a red hot sun there. And oof. Yeah, serious business was going down. Right, VDAs will spawn, but I mean, that's fine. We've got hellfires. We've got a lot of hellfires. So we ain't going to worry too much about these guys. Who's the biggest threat here? I think that's all of the VDAs that spawn. VDAs. Yep, that's all of them. Right, you can actually shoot your co-pilot here and kill your co-pilot and they will be gone forever then. Which is bad. We don't do that. We've already had one friendly kill. Yeah, I later realised that that's actually a turbine blowing in the wind, I believe. It's not actually uh, some woman's hair. Uh, which, yes, well, aren't I stupid? Uh, the answer to that question is yes. Right, let's go pick these guys up. Let's grab you, because no soldier is left behind. I don't think in all the levels it tells you where the MIAs are. In fact, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So they're a lot harder to actually find. Uh, do we have any enemies left? 
destroyed all the rapiers, rapiers. There's a couple of VDAs left. Uh, we'll go pick up this armor because it's here. Why not? We might as well pick up that fuel as well because sure, why not? Um, right, let's go snipe these last two anti-air guys. Uh, this game has uh, quite the stigma about it for being a really hard game. Uh, and it's really not. It's hard if you don't know what you're doing or you don't read. A lot of people don't read um, the instructions and stuff. And a lot of people back in the day as well wasn't used to uh, having their missions structured. So for that standpoint and for those reasons, I could see it being uh, confusing back in the day. But I used to love reading as a kid. I used to read everything. Um, and I think that's why I kind of clicked with it. And I like the fact that missions led on from each other and you actually had to uh, think about what you're doing and stuff. I really enjoyed that aspect of this game. Um, very unique for the time as well, I think. Well, it really is a shame that the the series didn't continue, the Strike series. Um, bullshit, in fact. Because, I mean, eventually it did mutate into another series. First, the good news. That's going to tell us all the good stuff that happened. That's going to tell us all the bad stuff that happened. Um, and I'm going to write down that password. Because the passwords are unique. They will carry over our score and our pilot situation. Ooh. But yes, eventually this series did turn into Future Cop LAPD. Uh, it was going to be Future Strike, but we've got Future Cop instead. Future Cop was a good game, but it was a very good game actually. One of my favourite PlayStation games, but it was not um, Strike. So that is J P zero Z Z L E. There we go. All right, guys. And that's it for the first episode of uh, <laughs> Desert Strike. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoy this game with me again. And if you did see my original playthrough of this and you're here to see this one, let me know. Let me know what you think. It's, uh, well, it's been some time and it feels great to be back. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. As always, till next time.